Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. You seek Yah, but you need to go further. Mm -hmm. It's time to go further. You know, through the years in my lifetime, there were moments where I would get these victories. You know, y'all would give me victories in certain things. And it kind of make you feel a sense of like, like, yeah, yeah, I really got Yah in my life. Things are really moving. And then Yah will come back and show you, you are further from me than you think. Mm. And I would always be like, what? And you say, you still haven't sought me the way you need to seek me. Yes. And I would always feel a sense of like, 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 wow, I thought I was doing good. <laughs> yeah, I would be like, no, no. I'm only blessing you to keep you coming toward me, to cause you to seek me a little more. These little blessings that I do for you isn't so that you would kick your feet up and say, yeah, yeah, I have arrived and yeah. No, you haven't. Mm. And I know some of you out there know that you need to seek him more. Mm. You know it, you see. And I'm here to tell you, I know you don't seek him more. I know you only give only so much to seeking him. Because true seeking y'all bring forth a certain type of fruit. Yes. And we're going to talk about that. Yes. Okay? Because I got a story here. I want to show you in the word how Israel felt at one time they were truly seeking Yah, they were drawing out of Yah, and yet they wasn't. You see, I'm going to point some things out to you because I want you to understand something, right? Pay attention when I tell you here. All the problems of life that you may be experiencing are the result of the lack of seeking Yah. I can definitely believe that. Do you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I mean, we can talk about marriage problems job problems, financial problems, health problems, uh, problems in your family, spiritual problems, all of these problems, I guarantee you that if you were seeking Yah, you would see better results in all of those areas of your life. Mm -hmm. But Beca Because you only seek Him, you have this immediate mediocrity, um, mediocre uh, um, seeking that you do for Yah. It's very small and minute. You don't seek him as hard as you should. And I'm going to prove it to you with the word. Mm -hmm. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 14. 2 Chronicles chapter 14. Now, we're going to be bringing this story from chapter 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of reading to do. Okay. Okay. So let's start off from um, at verse 1. Okay, Second Chronicles chapter 14. So Aviahu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of da David. And Akka his son reigned in his stead. In his days the land was quiet ten years. And Akka did that which was good and right in the eyes of Yahuwah Elohayu. For he took away the altars of the strange Elohims and the high places and broke down the images and cut down the Asherah poles and commanded Yehuda to seek Yahuwah Eloha of their fathers and to do the Torah and the commandment. And he took away out of all the cities of Yehuda the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him and he built fenced cities in Yahuwah for the land had rest and he had no war in those years because Yahuwah had given him rest now listen let's stop there okay mm -hmm. now I want you to pay attention to this right okay now um Aza what, what, is, what is the name you have there for Aza um, Verse 1. It looks like they're calling him uh, Aviyahu. No, after David. We see the name David. Akka. Akka. Okay, they call him Akka. In your King James, it may say Aza. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I said, he reigned in the stead of his father, which was um, Abijah. 
But yours is saying his name was the first. The first. Abi Yahoo. Okay, Abi Yahoo. Okay, and so he reigned in the stead. Now pay attention. When he reigned instead, it said that in his days, in his days, the land was quiet ten years. Pay attention. And as I did that which was good and right in the eyes of Yahuwah, his Elohim. For he, notice it says, he took away the altars of the strange gods in the high places and break down the images and cut down the groves. Did it say they? It said he. He. Pay attention. Watch this. And commanded Judah to seek Yah. Mm. Ain't that something? He told Judah, he said, you need to seek Yah. Mm. Now, why did he have to tell him that? Because they had all of these idols and stuff around, mm. right? So he said, he said, y'all need to seek Yah. You know, he when he cut down all the images and did that and told them that they need to seek Yah, Yahuwah, the Elohim, the Elohim of their fathers, and to do what? The law and the commandments. Mm -hmm. Wow. So they wasn't doing any of that. Mm -hmm. But yet, they had, in the, in the days, the land was quiet for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And yet they had idols and all this stuff around, right? Mm. Pay attention. It's going to get deep. And also he took away out of all the cities of Judah, the high places and the images and the kingdom was quiet before him, and he built a fence cities in Judah, for the land had rest and had no war in those days, because Yahuwah had given them rest. So Yahuwah, pay attention. Look at what Aza had done, and Yahuwah said, "You know what? I'm gonna give him some rest. I'm gonna give him rest from um, the wars and all of this kind of stuff. I'm gonna give him rest." And Judah is going to experience his rest, really, because of him. Because it was him that took down the altars, not them. Mm -hmm. Pay attention. You better pay attention. Watch this. Now keep reading. Verse 7. Therefore he said unto Yehuda, Let us build these cities, and make about them walls, and towers, gates, and bars, while the land is yet before us. Because we have sought Yehuda alone. Hanu, we have sought him, and he has given us rest on every side. So they built and prospered. And Achah had an army of men that bore targets and spears out of Yehuda, 300,000. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. And out of Benjamin that bore shields and drew bows, 304 score thousand. All these were mighty men of valor. Okay, now stop there. Now watch this. So they had all of these mighty men of valor, right? And Judah, Benjamin, and, and now, now pay attention. But notice what they say there, right? Go down to verse um, 7. And it says, Therefore he said unto Judah, Let us build these cities and make about them walls and towers and gates and bars while the land is yet before us, because we have sought. See, remember when he told them to seek Yahuwah, right? They said, we have sought Yahuwah and our, our Elohim, and we have sought him, and he have given us rest on every side. See, one of the biggest mistakes we make sometimes is when we look at everything that's going around and we get to saying, we have truly sought him. Really? Hmm. You did, to a certain extent. See, we all have sought Yah, right? Mm -hmm. To well, a certain extent. Yeah. That's right. That's why you got to understand something, right? I've heard so many people say things before. I remember a person said this to me one time. They said, um, um, I have obeyed Yah and everything. I was like, really? Okay. Well, those are your words. I would like to hear what Yah has to say about that. Because it's easy for you to look at your own works and your own deeds and say, I have, I have, I have, I have. But you only see so much. <laughs> you ain't looking at everything. Trust me, y'all see everything. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he can't show you everything because you may implode upon your own self. Mm -hmm. Right? You may you may just fall because you can't even take if he show you how much you have truly sought him. Because it's very small. Mm -hmm. Trust me, it's very small. So now, let's keep reading the story. Pay attention. Watch this. And there came out against them Zarak the Cushy 
with a host of a thousand thousand and three hundred chariots and came unto Marisha. Okay, now the Cushi, he's talking about Ethiopians, Cushites, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Keep going. <clears throat> then Acha went out against him, and they set the battle in array in the valley of Tephatha and Marisha. And Acha cried unto El Yahua, Elohayu, and said, Yahuwah, it is nothing with you to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Yahuwah, Elohayu, for we rest on you, and in your name we go against this multitude. Now, now o listen. Yahuwah, uh -huh. you are our Elohim. Let not man prevail against you. Now, I find that that's a very powerful prayer what he prayed there. Because he looked out, he said, okay, we about to go to war. And he knew he had a lot of men, right? Hundreds of thousands of men that was fighting with him, right? But he sat there and he realized because he was a righteous man. Mm -hmm. See, Azar, he the one that took down, cut down the groves and got rid of the idols and the images. He the one did. So this man is like, he ain't caught up in his pride. He sat there and he said, wait a minute. He said, for, he said, help us. He said, for, for. It is nothing with thee to help. It ain't nothing, Father. For mm. you to help us, it's nothing. It's a very small thing for you to do. It is nothing, right? Then he says, whether with many or with them that have no power, help us. Wow. <laughs> That's powerful. And then he says, um, for Yahuwah, our Elohim, for we rest on thee in thy name. And in thy name, we go against his mom. Wow. <laughs> he put his name there. Let me tell you what's powerful about that, right? You remember what David said to Goliath? Watch this. David said to Goliath, he said, he said, he said, he said, you come to me, you know, with your sword or whatever. He said, but I come to you in the name of Yahuwah. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> you see you see how powerful it is? Yes. I come to you. I got the name of Yahuwah. And that's where Goliath looked at him and said, you got a little rock in your hand? You think that I'm a dog that you're going to just slay me? He said, but that rock, we talking about the rock. And I said, that's Yahuwah. You know, I come to you in the name of Yahuwah. So when they said, we come against this multitude in your name, Yahuwah said, okay. I got to step up. I got to do something. Now keep reading. Verse 12. That is deep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Yahuwah smote the Cushim before Acha and before Yehuda, and the Cushi, Cushim fled. And Acha and the people that were with him pursued them unto Gerar. And the Cushim were overthrown, that they could not recover themselves, for they were destroyed before Yahuwah and before his host. And they carried away very much spoil. And they smote all the cities round about Gerar, for the fear of Yahuwah came upon them. And they spoiled all the cities, for there was exceeding much spoil in them. They smote also the tents of cattle and carried away sheep and camels in abundance and returned to Jerusalem. Now, what's amazing about this story, so when you read this chapter here, okay, that be, that's the first chapter we're done with. Mm -hmm. So when you basically read that chapter, you say to yourself, okay, they, Yah is with them. They have gotten rid of the altars, right? And he's given them these victories. They have truly sought him. He's with them and, and wow, this thing is like, they are there. They have arrived. This is where we need to get to, right? Nope. You got to go a little further. You got to go a little further. You got to go a little further. Mm -hmm. Because this next chapter is going to prove to you that they still had further to go. And Yahuwah knew it. And he saw it. Mm. Mm. Before we move on to the next chapter, yes. I just wanted to point out some things that's very important. If we were to look at that situation yes. back then and compare it to now yes what is the 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 thing that stuck out to me the most you had a righteous man who came and told a bunch of unrighteous yeah israelites 
specifically the tribe of Judah. I'm going to prove it to you. You got a clean yeah. house. Go ahead. You got to do this. Get rid of the idols. Get, get rid of all these statues. Get out of this stuff out of here. <clears throat> it's time to clean house, O oh Yehuda. Yep. He told them we got to set the record straight with Yah. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if we do these things, because there are certain decrees set in heaven already. Yes, listen. Because they clean house and they walked in obedience to this righteous man of Yah, what followed? Rest. Wow. They received rest because of this one righteous man and their obedience to listen to him. Wow. Did you hear what she said? I knew you was going to key right. I knew she was going to key right in on that. <laughs> I already knew. I said, you go ahead. I knew she was going to key in on it. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? Mm. One righteous person. Mm. Now you look at what we're going on in societies, right? Mm. Today, in the world today, all it takes is one righteous person. We're one righteous person. And Yah's people out here to hear that one righteous yes. person and just obey him. Mm -hmm. And Yah would bring victories. And guess what? They weren't completely, they didn't, they didn't, they really didn't truly seek him. Yeah. They just did a few things that the righteous man told them to do. But watch this next chapter because this next chapter is going to show you how far they had went and that they need to go further. Mm. Hallelujah. Watch this. And the Ruach Elohim came upon Azariah, who the son of Odad, mm -hmm. and he went out to meet Akka and said unto him, Hear ye me, Akka, and all Yehuda and Benjamin. Yahuwah is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. Wow. But if you forsake him, right. he will forsake you. Now, for a long season, Yashrael has been without the true Elohim and without a teaching priest and without Torah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, didn't I tell you? I was going to prove it to you. Do you see what it said here? It said that for a while, they were, it said, wait a minute, let me go back. Okay. First of all, the, the prophet told me, he said, Yahuwah is with you. In other words, he's showing signs that he's blessing you and he's ready to be with you and help you, right? While ye be with him, if you seek him. Well, I thought they were seeking him. He said, you got to seek him further, right? He will be found of you, but if you forsake him, he will forsake you. But watch what he says. Now for a long season, Israel had been without a true Elohim. What? <laughs> they didn't even think the people were without Yah. In that last chapter we read, they were without him. See, they, Yah was moving because of the one man. <laughs> mm -hmm. He was moving because of the one man. But they truly hadn't been seeking him because they had no priest teaching them and they were without the law. It says here that they were without a true Elohim. Wow. Keep reading. But when they, in their trouble, did turn unto Yahuwah Aloha of uh -huh. Israel and sought him, he was found of them. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out nor to him that came in, but great vexations mm -hmm. were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. Listen. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for Elohim did vex them with all adversity. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Now, now, pay attention here. So, even though Yah had given them rest, they couldn't go out and come in. And the cities were what? It says that nations were, 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 were destroyed of nations, and the cities were, were destroyed of cities, and God vexed them with all adversity. So, wow, they still need to seek him. Now, why did Yah do this? I'm going to tell you why. Because they still had idols in the land. They still, they didn't even know the true Elohim, right? They didn't know Yahuwah. They truly didn't know him. Although he was trying to have a relation with them and they were seeking him a little, they still didn't really know him. And they had no covenant with them. Wow, I'm going to prove to you they had no covenant. Let's keep reading. Watch this. And in those times, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, That's but right. great vexations were upon all the inhabitants of the country. And nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, from Elohim did, for Elohim did vex them with all adversity. 
Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Achah heard these things, and the prophecy of Odad the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols. Whoa, wait a minute. I thought they, I thought, they still had idols. <laughs> you see this? Keep going. And put away the abominable idols out of the land of Yehuda uh -huh. and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of Yahuwah. Wow. And was before the porch of Yahuwah. And what did he that do? That was before the, the porch of Yahuwah. Uh -huh. And he gathered all Yehuda and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Shimon, for they fell to him out of Yashrael in abundance when they saw that Yahuwah Aloha was with him. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem mm -hmm. in the third month in the 15th year of the reign of Akka. And they offered unto Yahuwah the same time of the spoil which they had brought 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. Wow, this is a sacrifice. Listen to this. And what else did they do? And they entered into a covenant to seek Yahuwah wow. Aloha of their fathers with all their heart. Wow. And with all their soul. Wow. That whosoever would not seek Yahuwah uh -huh. Elohim of Yashrael should be put to death. Wow. Whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swore unto Yahuwah with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpets and with shofars. And all Yehuda rejoiced at the oath. Wow! For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with their whole desire, and he was found of them. And Yahuwah gave them rest round about. And also concerning Makah, the mother of Acha the king, he removed her from being queen because she had made an idolatrous Asherah pole. And Acha cut down her idol and stamped it and burnt it and the brook at the brook of Kadron. But the high places were not taken away out of Yashrael. Nevertheless, the heart of Acha was perfect all his days. And he brought <laughs> into the house of Elohim the things that his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels and there was no more war unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of Akka. Now, I want you to really pay attention to this story because this story really says it all. It just says it all. So, guess what? They still had idols and stuff in the land. They still had all these idols and stuff. And even though a Acre or Azar went out and he tore down the altars and, and did us and told Israel to seek him, they still hadn't saw them completely, right? And so eventually they came around and they said, okay, we got to, we got to seek y'all, right? And it says, and when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Obed, the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from, from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of Yahuwah that was before the porch of, of Yahuwah. So basically, he said, okay, I got to go a little further. I know I did this. I cut down some groves. I did all this here. But it's still some stuff that need to be done. I got to fine tune this cleanup. Mm -hmm. It's like you. It's like a person that you tell sweep the flow and they mm -hmm. have to sweep it. They get up the bulk of the trash, but still stuff over here, still stuff underneath the couch, still stuff under the the couch, the, um, um, tables or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the person and, and the and the owner is like, wait a minute, you got to sweep all of this, right? Mm -hmm. You got to get all of this, you got to clean it all up. Now the part that gets me here is this part right here. Watch this. So he gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month of the fifteenth year of of the reign of Azar. And they offered unto you at the same time of the spoil which they had brought, 700 oxen, 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of animals. Yes. They said, we're going to put together a mighty sacrifice because we serious about this oath that we about to make. You know, and then and they entered into a covenant to seek. This is a covenant to seek you, y'all. We're going to seek you with all our heart. You see the difference because they didn't do that at first. Right. Wow. Right. 
They didn't do it at first. Mm, mm, mm. And neither did you. Mm. Neither did any of us. And that's why y'all has to do this. Y'all says, look here, if you want to go further, you want to continue to get victories, you got to put away this now. You got to drop this now. You know there's some things you need to put away, right? You know it. You know there's some things you need to fine tune, right? Mm -hmm. We can't have this mindset, family, that yes. because the Most High does a little for us here and a little, for, or even a lot. We can't have the mindset, oh, I must be doing something good because he has barocked me or he has blessed me. Right. A lot of people get very comfortable That's right. in the things that Yah allows good in their lives. And they equate that to, oh, I must be seeking him enough. But as we pointed out here in this story, it is very clear that it was the righteousness of one man yes. that caused Yah to have mercy on Yehuda, Benjamin, and Wow, Ephraim. you hear this? That's the, right. The, the righteousness of one man. And because he was um, pretty much infecting them with that righteousness and saying, look, we got to get rid of this stuff. Yeah, he was but, commanding them. Matter of <laughs> fact, right. keep going, keep going. But they didn't get rid of all of it. That's right. And so because of the words of the prophet, he convinced them further, look, y'all, we ain't doing enough. If we want yep. Yah to do A, B, C, we got to seek him with our whole hearts. Yeah. And so when he brought forth that message to them, I guess they were so fired up. They were like, we going to seek you with our whole heart. Yeah. And our with all of our mind, our That's heart, right. our soul, our bodies. That's right. And man, see the flip side of that, though, if you don't. They said, man, if you don't seek him with your whole heart, what did it say? <laughs> I was just about to go there. Man. Listen to this verse um, 12. Yeah. Listen to this here. And they entered into a covenant to seek Yahuwah of their fathers with all their heart and mm -hmm. with all their soul that whosoever would not seek Yahuwah Elohim of Yashrael should be put to death. Wow. Did you hear this? So, so what this king did, he said, you know what? We're going to go into this seeking him, right? We're going to seek him with our whole heart. And if you don't, you're going to be put to death. We're going to put this thing on you so hard to where if I catch anybody not truly seeking him, you're going to be put to death. Mm. Now, now, is that the mighty man of war he going to put to death? No, on he said, whether small or great, man or woman. Wow. Mm. Are you hearing small or great? You talking about children? It makes you wonder. You hear this? Or, well, or people who were low. Yeah, uh, low, yeah. Uh, uh, great meaning you had a lot of um, power and authority or yes. whether you were just a lay person. Yeah. Man, Man or woman. Or woman. He <laughs> yeah. said, you better seek Yah or you're going to be put to death. We're going to put you to death. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Is it, was there a song out years ago? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it's a song or if I just heard somebody saying it one, though, one day. Ain't no half stepping. Is that a song? Yeah, it is. I okay, but anyway, ain't no yeah. half stepping in uh -huh. y'all. So you got to take it all the way with all your heart and soul. Yeah. And that is something that we are lacking today. I see a lot of people thinking that we can get victories yeah. without the power of Yah. Now, hmm, I'm not going to get off into this, but right now there's some things going on and our people are thinking that if we march just right, if we say the right things, yeah. that we're going to scare the enemy. But we have seen time and time you again in scripture you yeah, where you ahead. will get no victory without the power of no Yah. No victory. It ain't going to happen. If Yah ain't in it, if you want to go march and you have commit in your heart, you thinking that the uh, power of the Egyptian gods is going to be your saving grace or um, the power of your weapons. I know some of y'all don't agree with this, but show me in, script, in scripture where the Most High um, allowed us to get victories when we go out on our own accord. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of places in Scripture where the Most High will allow us to be slaughtered when yeah. we go out without Him or without His b um, blessing or Baraka or, or His or, permission. Or listen, or if you get sin. Mm, Remember Achan, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. What's funny is when David and them went at, out to fight against the people of Ai, right? Mm -hmm. They were more. And only a few men of I said Joshua and his whole, I said David, I meant Joshua and his whole crew running. Mm. Sent them running. They were defeated before the men of I to the point where Joshua fell on his face and said, what is going on? And what did y'all tell him? It's sin in the mist. Mm. You can't have victory over your enemies if you got sin in the mist. 
camp. You it's sin in, in the, the camp. camp. Yes. And that's what the problem is. You see, you I don't care how many militias you get together, black militias. I don't care how many of y'all get together. You get guns. You get all this stuff. You want the victory. I don't care how much you march. I don't care how much you do any of this stuff. The word is clear. Y'all will not be mocked. You understand me? When he says that you get the victory through him, and it is Yah that gives us the victory. The scripture tells you that. It's Yah that gives us the victory. That's the only way you're going to get it. I don't care what you do. If you got sin in the midst, you ain't put away your idols and all the wickedness that's going on among our people, ain't putting that stuff down, then I guarantee you will be defeated. You will be, you could be more, and you will still be defeated, like in the case with Joshua. Well, like I often say, there's a flip to a flip side to the yeah. passage that says, if Yah be for you, who can be against you? Yeah. The flip side of that, if Yah be against you, who can be for you? Wow. So, that being said, yeah. if we ain't pushing righteousness as a people, then we can forget it. We can hang it up. It yeah. is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I understand how our enemies are towards us, but was not it prophesied that they'd be this way? Didn't Yahuwah declare it? Mm -hmm. Why are our enemies treating us the way that they are treating us? Yeah. Are they getting out of hand? Or did Yah allow them to? Wow. Now we understand where it says that they would forward the affliction. Yeah. But didn't he allow that too? Mm -hmm. Why isn't the Most High stepping in? In this case... With this um, this king here, Acha, the Most High, even though the, the Israelites weren't all together, but they were willing to listen to that righteous man. Yeah. He came in. He said, I'm going give to you, give you the victory because you have been righteous in my sight. Yeah. But what do our people lack today? A lot of our people, they want Kanye West as their, their leader, their president. <laughs> but let a righteous man stand up. Mr. She's us. <laughs> let a righteous man stand up. Let's find somebody over in Africa that's yeah. in some village somewhere who's been righteous and seeking Yah and doing all. He ain't dressed right. He ain't got enough money. He ain't got enough clout. He ain't got enough power. Yeah. That's how our people are. They want somebody like Kwame Kilpatrick, you know? <laughs> they want somebody with a big name, a former yeah. um, basketball star or football star or celebrity. They want mm -hmm. somebody with a name that they recognize <clears throat> to be our leaders. They don't want some man from an African village that no one knows, but a person who is led of Yah, filled with the Ruach HaKadosh. Mm -hmm. Our people don't want that. Yeah, I want that. And, and because they don't want that, they don't want to listen to a true man of Elohim, well, guess what? They're going to continue to go through. That's the word. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no way around it. If my people that are called by my name, well, what? Humble themselves and pray and, and seek my face and, and turn from their wicked ways. So you can't just seek him. You got to turn from your wicked ways. See, this is exactly what they did. Right. They saw them. They turned from the wicked ways. And they said, okay. And look, look here. When he said, we're going to put you to death. It says, and they swore unto Yahuwah with a loud, a loud voice, voice. And with shouting and with trumpets and with cornets. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath. So they made an oath with Yah. Mm. Man, let me tell you mm. something about an oath. Mm. When you make an oath, there's a curse behind it yes. if you don't keep it. That's right. That's right. That's true. That's in the word. It's a curse behind it. Mm -hmm. You know? Look at look at this here. Let me show you something here. That's verse 15. Watch this. Verse 15. Look at what it says here. For oath. What do it say? Curse. Woo. Mm. Ain't that something? Because with an oath, there's going to be a curse with it if you don't keep it. Yeah. Why? Because you have sworn. It says curse, oath, sworn. Because you have sworn. And because you have sworn, guess what? You better stick to that oath. And Israel, they knew it. They said, man, we better stick to this oath here. You know, they have sworn. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Let's keep going. So, yeah. It says, so, they rejoice at the oath. For they had sworn with all their heart and sought him with all their whole desire and he was found of them and Yahuwah gave them rest right around because they were serious. And they kept the oath. They kept the oath. And Yah said, oh, because you kept this oath. But wait a minute, I thought they were okay in the last chapter. 
<laughs> you see how much further they had to go? What's a trip? In the last chapter, they didn't make an oath. That's right. They okay. didn't. They they simply listened to some of the wise or the wise words of the that's of right. the king. That's uh, right. He instructed them. Hey, he's a righteous man. He instructed them, and they obeyed him. That's right. But taking it further, which is taking that oath, this is this yeah. is solidifying it. This is like a contract. When you make that oath, it's basically saying. This is why the word curse comes in. Yeah. It's basically agreeing that, look, if we don't keep this yep. oath, then we accept the curse. It's like the blessings and, and the curses of Deuteronomy yeah. 28. That's what he was saying. If you hearken, then you're going to be blessed. But if you don't, all these curses are going to come. Yep. That was an oath the children of Israel made. Remember in, the, in those passages where they said, yes, we will do it. And they kept saying it after each of the. You yep. remember that? Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I said, okay, I'm holding y'all to every word. Wow. I'm thinking right now, as I look at our people who believe that they are awakened right now, yeah. know you. Uh, most of the people who are in this so called awakening are really truly asleep. Um, we've said this many times, and I've seen other people post it as well. But knowing that you're an Israelite does not mean that you're in the truth. And that is the sad reality that we're looking at that a lot of these people think that cultural identity or knowing who you are is enough to declare that you're in the truth. Right. Didn't the scripture say that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free? Shall make you free. I see a lot of bound Israelites. I don't yeah. see no free Israelites because if you were free, you wouldn't be falling in the types of foolishness that we yes. see plastered all over social media. Yes. I hate to say it, but even some of the posts that we see on social media are breaking the Torah. That's right. Going against the Torah. Mm -hmm. Defaming Yahuwah. And so we've got a long way to well, go. Bring even shame to his name, yeah. Bring his shame to his name. Even before, I mean, these people, they had their idols, they had all of this stuff, but I think we've become worse than them. Yeah. That's why the scripture says, an evil man shall wax worse and worse. Yeah. So these generations have gotten worse. And so what does that tell us? This is why we continue to see the punishments. Now, a lot of people are talking about our punishment is over, the 400 year, this, that, and the other. And I want to talk about this in a separate video because one thing you have to understand, when the Bible prophesies, and if there's a prophecy in Scripture, everything has to line up. Mm -hmm. Did the Scripture say that our affliction was going to continue after 400 years or increase? Did it say <laughs> it was going to increase? Mm -hmm. Don't it seem like things are increasing so wow. something is going on here something is going on we can't here. keep saying that our punishment is over but yet we see in our people continuing yeah to be i mean treated so horribly yeah even though these other nations are uh, saying they're sorry and all of this kind of stuff why is the affliction increasing yeah because our sins are increasing yeah you know it's amazing to me when i look at all of this here it, it's so important that we get this message because we got to go further in seeking him and mm -hmm. our sins have increased as a people. They have it and I ain't gonna turn this thing around. We gotta be so serious about this thing. Let me show you something about this man Aza or Aka. Okay. Did you would have said about his mama? She had a pole or something. This to this here. His mama was queen because his father had died mm -hmm. and he took over the reign as king. But because his mama was still alive, she was considered the queen, right? Watch this. He, the scripture, let's read the scripture. Let's see what it says here. Look at verse, um, watch this. Okay, verse 16. Listen. And it says, and also concerning Makah, the mother of Achab the king, he removed her. He removed her. He did what? His he, mother? He removed her from being queen <laughs> because she had made an idolatrous Asherah pole. And Akka cut down her idol and stamped it and burned it at the brook Kidron. Wow. Did you hear this? <laughs> he said, Mama, I know you, my mama, I know you the queen, but you know what? You ain't gonna have this idol around if we get this thing up, but y'all ain't about to punish me because of you, mama. Wow. He's like, we gotta cut this thing down and we gonna burn it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, do you see this man's heart? Mm -hmm. He did. He didn't butter up because, well, that's my mama. You know, that's hers. I'm just, you know. <laughs> He's like, uh-uh. I'm going to tell y'all now, I'm glad you did, did the, this family salvation stuff. 
Unfortunately, a lot of people are not yeah. willing to go against family for Yah. Nope. Whether it's a mother or a father, sister or a brother, it doesn't matter. A lot of people are just not willing to go mm -hmm. against husband or wife. We're going to talk about that husband and wife thing a one son, of these days. A son right? and a daughter can do yep. just about anything. And parents will sit there yep. and it's, well, you know. That's um, my baby. And, you know, and it's, it's, <laughs> you, better, boy, you better not allow yourself to go down that path. When somebody do wickedly, you better back up from around it. You better separate yourself from it. It's going to be like a vortex. It's going to pull you down in it too. You know, if you don't, if you don't separate yourself from it, it's going to be like a hand. It's going to reach out and just grab you like this here and say, oh, mm -hmm. you with them? Okay, well, you coming with him then. Mm -hmm. So whatever he going to go through, you going to go through it too. Mm -hmm. You hear what I said? Yep. Hallelujah. No family salvation. Mm -hmm. Let everyone work out their own, own soul salvation. salvation. That's right. With fear and trembling. Fear and trembling. Don't be trying to ride in on your husband or your wife or yeah. your parents. You know, everybody has to have their own salvation worked out with fear and trembling. Yeah. But all of this stuff where people trying to... Uh, you following this person and following that person, and you know they ain't right. Yeah. The Most High is going to hold you accountable for that because yeah. He knows the thoughts and intents of every man and woman's heart. That's right. If you're following Him or if you're following people. That's right. Let me tell you something. You out there, I want you to pay attention. You know you can seek Yah more. You know it, don't you? Yes. Don't sit here and tell me no that you didn't sought Yah as more. Uh, uh, you know that you lacking. Yeah. You lacking a whole lot mm -hmm. because I know when a person is truly seeking Yah, I know it. You will I see can the see fruit it. of it. You will see the fruit of it. A person is truly seeking Yah. Let me tell you something about a person is truly seeking Yah. A person is truly seeking Yah. He, he don't let time interfere with him. So, in other words, I gotta go to work, so I ain't got time. You know, I got I got to deal with the wife and kids, so I you know I ain't got time. I I, I got to I got to deal with the um with chore with cho with work at the house, and I I got I got to deal with that, right? I I, I I ain't get the time. Did you pray today? Um, I didn't get a chance to. I'm telling you, a person that truly seeks Yah, he don't let time get in the way. Mm -hmm. Guess what else he don't let get in the way? He don't let spouse. He don't let children he don't let job he don't let financial things right he don't let friends he don't let internet he don't let entertainment and television he don't let any of that stuff not even his own desires interfere with his seeking y'all getting close to y'all did you hear what i said mm -hmm. but you know you have allowed some of all of that stuff haven't you mm -hmm. you have allowed some of all of that stuff to interfere with your seeking him and you know it you know it sometimes your about come around and you if don't nobody tell you to, to get in the word or something you won't even get in the word you won't even pray if don't nobody tell some of you huh you got to have a heart to want to seek him on your own. You shouldn't need no one to tell you anything. And seeking Yah is a daily thing. Daily. It is a daily thing. I shared a song with you all last year sometime, I believe it was. Um, it's by a, a group called Avalon. And it's such a yes. blessed song to me. Yeah. And it's, it goes like this. I can't live a day without you. Yes. If you don't have that feeling or desire within you that you can't live a day without Yah, then you definitely, you are definitely yeah. not seeking him enough. If you don't feel like, man, what would I do without him? If you don't feel like, what am yeah. I? I'm nothing without him. If you feel like you got this all locked and tied by yourself and that you can just go weeks and weeks without even talking to Yah or even days, every morning when I get up, one of the first things that comes out of my mouth, not always, but it, I usually get around to it within that walk and that talk, mm -hmm. that this is the day that my Yah has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. In a sense, I'm speaking that everything in this day I'm going to rejoice about. Mm -hmm. So I'm making a declaration that everything in this day is going to work for my good. Yes. So when you quote the word, it becomes that important because that's that's the first person on my mind in the morning when I get up is Yahuwah. That's right. And so if you think, if you get to that point, you are getting closer and closer to under, understanding what a true walk with Yah is. Now, even in that, that is not all the seeking right. we must do. Seeking Yah goes beyond reading a few Bible uh, chapters or verses. 
um, fasting here and there, right. praying, seeking y'all goes beyond that. That's right. There are spiritual battles that we enter in, and we have to fellowship with Yah and get an understanding of these things. And right. He will essentially coach you, <clears throat> That's lead right. and guide you into the directions and the paths that you will go. He will even speak to you and tell you when to make moves and things in your life. We think Yah don't care about yes. the little things. Yes, He does. Yes, Yah he cares does. about the little things in our lives. This is why He says, in all thy ways, mm -hmm. acknowledge me. Acknowledge him. In right. all your ways, acknowledge him. And he will direct your path. Don't ever, I'm going to say this real quick. Don't ever think that what you have is a testimony of you seeking Yah. Yeah. Because the Bible clearly tells us that a man's life doesn't consist in the abundance of things which he possess. Sometimes people equate their possessions to proof that they know Yah. That means Donald Trump know him, right? He's got more <laughs> possessions, right? There's a lot of people with a lot of things. That's right. Yah allows, he, the scripture says he reigns on the just and the unjust. That's right. So even wicked people Yah reigning on, yeah, that's right. he's allowing them to get things. Don't ever think that the yeah. things that you own and possess is proof that you have sought Yah the way you should. Right. He, that That's not proof at all. <clears throat> you will see and understand that you're seeking Yah when you can compare to what we have seen a lot of the Acre. That's right. When Yah gives us the victory over our enemies, that's what I'm looking for, y'all. I'm looking mm -hmm. for the day to where we can get victory in everyday situations, even when when things seem impossible, situations that you're up against yep. that seem impossible. You call on Yah and He deliver you out of those things. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing when I think about this whole thing. You know, it. I, you need to understand this one thing, okay? I said it earlier. All the problems of life that you are experiencing are the result of the lack of truly seeking God in your life. Mm -hmm. If you're having... Let, let, me, let me explain something to you here, right? We always want an answer, right? Give me an answer. Brother, I need your help. Talk to me. And I understand it because I've been there too. Mm -hmm. Where you feel like I gotta talk to somebody, somebody can help me. I remember one time I was dealing with something so spiritual and so deep, and I was going through something in my life. This is before I met my wife, and I just need an answer. I went to I went to different ministers and pastors. And I was like, man, you can help me. I said, you gotta help me with this, help me with that, and none of them could help me. Not one of them had the answer for me. Not one of them. Guess where I ended up getting it from? Yeah. I got my answer from Yah, but I had to struggle, and I had to struggle real hard and pray real hard, dig down deep, dig those knees down deep, put that foot down deep into the ground, mm -hmm. you know, to really, before I could finally get that answer from Yah. And I'm here to tell you, those of you that are going through marital problems, if you truly sought Yah from your heart, I guarantee you, he will fix those marital problems. He will guide you in the exact direction that he wants you to go in. He will mm -hmm. tell you what to say, what to do, what what his will is. He'll show you his will, and he'll make it happen. I guarantee you. Those of you having problems on the job, problems in your family, in every area of your life, I'm here to tell you that if you seek Yah a little bit more, seek to seek him more for a spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you get that spiritual growth, Things going to start moving out of your way. Things are going to start happening. Mm -hmm. Because those demons that's invoking all those problems in your life, they're going to have to back up. Because now you're getting stronger spiritually. Mm -hmm. They're going to say, oh, man, I think I think I bet they're going to get scared. You know why? Because they're scared you're going to send them to hell. Mm -hmm. That's what they scared. they scared you're going to be aware. You're going to become aware of them. And once you become aware, you, you're going to be like, like, like those demons. When, when, when the, those brothers of Sabbath tried to cast out those devils mm -hmm. and they said uh, we, we, we adjure you by Yahushua whom Paul preached they said well we know we know Yahushua and we know Paul but who are you? now they knew Paul why did you know Paul? because we know he'll cast us out he'll, throw, he'll send us to hell we know who he is but who are you? <laughs> wow mm -hmm. and demons don't need to be looking at you saying who are you? Those demons need to know who you are. 
Meaning they should have some fear of you because they know that you have the Ruach Kakadesh. Yes. But when demons are allowed to just just move about and yeah. torment you and do all these things, that's a testament that Yah yeah. is not first in your life. Wow. And you that you it? are not seeking him because you're supposed to have power over those spirits. Right. I wanted to say this. Um, we've gotten a few emails. We get emails all the time, family. Mm. All of the time. <clears throat> Some of them are very heavy duty. Yeah. The demonic presence in the lives of Yah's people is all over the world, right? But in the lives of Yah's people is very thick and heavy. Yeah. Some of you are going through some heavy duty things. Okay? Mm -hmm. When we read these emails, we know exactly what's going on. And we want you to understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. There are things that you have allowed in that yep. is causing these things that happen in your family, yep. with your children, with your spouse, in your finances. Sometimes it seems like you can't catch a break. Yep. We've done messages before where we talked about the opening and closing of doors to demons. There are ways that people allow demons to come right in. Yes. They come in and they, they live in your presence and your midst and they just move about. They manipulate things. They do things. That is not a light thing. Okay? Yeah. Especially when it's affecting your family, the flow of your family. Yeah. Um, you're getting to the point where you're at your wit's end. Some of you want to um, do things to yourself. You want to take your own life. I mean, that means that something has been allowed in your life and you don't know what to do with it. Right. And it's like even hearing the word, sometimes you're just, you're like, well, I'm doing all of that. It's got to be a reason why if you're praying, if you're fasting, if you're reading the Bible, it's got to be something else that you have allowed in that hasn't been expelled out to as to the reason why these things are still continuing in your life. Understand, understand something, right? We think that just because we read our Bible, mm -hmm. or we may look at some broadcast or some um, 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 teaching, mm -hmm. and that and that and we do these things and we praying that that means that we're truly seeking Yah. Mm -hmm. Religious people do this all day long. Don't they none do. of them have the Holy Spirit. They do. Right, they they do this all the time. Some people are so religious with it, right? And they still don't know Yah. It's seeking Yah goes beyond just doing the format formal things. It's a heart thing. Mm -hmm. When a person truly seeks Yah, they truly find Him. Mm -hmm. And if you're not finding Him, you're not truly seeking Him. You can't have one without the other, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, understand something. There was a movie came out years ago called Constantine. I don't know if y'all remember that movie. Constantine with um, what's his name? The guy from um, what's the um, Ke 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 Keanu Reeves? Okay, mm -hmm. was in the movie. You remember when he walked into a room of demons, and he said Constantine, and when those demons heard it was him, and they saw it was him, they all turned around and they all was looking like like, like oh man, mm -hmm. what's about to happen? Because they knew he was gonna cast them out. They they got that from the from the from the book. Okay, from the <laughs> <Yeah>. scriptures. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's where they got it from. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, these spirits aren't supposed to feel com comfortable around you. Right. Now you got sneaky spirits. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you so sneaky spirits, we have to be careful of even sneaky spirits. Because me and my wife, even though we have the spirit of discernment and we have the Holy Spirit, every now and then you'll get a sneaky spirit that'll sneak in around you and it'll be so quiet and won't move and just will be so there and then one day you say, "Is that a demon? Is that a spirit?" Now I'm not saying it's a demon per se in your house, but sometimes these spirits are watching you all the time, and they're trying to get a little something, trying to make you a little something, trying to get you emotional, trying to do these things. And sometimes you have to turn around and pay attention and realize, you know, they're just like people. Let me <laughs> let me say this right. <laughs> would, you, would you let a person just come in your house, look, and stand up behind you, right? Now, it just, like like as if he's leaning forward a little bit and he's behind you just oh, hovering over you like this dude. Now, if you can see that in the mirror, you be like, oh, get from behind me, right? Mm -hmm. But they'll hover over you and be controlling you and be pushing you a little, little buttons and shoving your shoulder a little bit. 
And you'll be getting upset and then you don't even know what's going on because it's a sneaky spirit. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to see this spirit. See what's going on. If you could get your eyes open and see how they just walk in and out of your house, jump in and out of your kids, huh? Jump in and out of your on your job, get into people, move all about doing stuff. It's just like when we saw the, the video. This was a crazy video. Crazy. I don't know if y'all seen the video where the lady was in the store. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she was going on talking about, pre talking about in Jesus' repent. name. She was repent. telling people to repent. And she was using an MF word and just cursing up a storm. I mean, it was mm -hmm. ridiculous cursing, right? Yeah, she was saying things like... Um you're an accuser of the brethren. Yeah, because the, the, the guy said, so he said, well, you're sitting right now. She said, are you accuse her? And she went all off on him, right? It was obvious this woman had a demon, right? Obvious. But when the police finally came, you could hear in the background mm -hmm. somebody saying, yay, yay, all crazy. Like, I said, what the demon do? Just jump in the hell now? <laughs> it's obvious that some, some really eerie, creepy things were going on in her, and then the person was shouting yay in the background. That's what these demons do. They hop around like you wouldn't believe in the people, you know? And so you got to be to the point in your life to where you're saying, you know what? I'm going to seek Yah to the point, get close enough to him to where I can sense a wicked spirit if they come near me. If it's one in somebody or somebody hand me something that got some type of incantation, I'm going to be able to, I want to be able to seek and feel this and know what's going on, you know? What's really sad is a lot of people, they have a misunderstanding about demons. Yeah. Um, they think about Linda Blair and all of these um, uh, instances where people are growling and snarling and yeah. spitting and all of that. Demons don't always manifest like that. That's right. A person could um, have a suit and tie on. We've said this before. Yeah. A person can look perfectly normal and have an entity sitting right up in them. Yeah. Uh, demons don't just manifest themselves in, right. a, in a gargoyle type way. That's right. They can also be very pol very polite. Uh, very gentle, but but it's an act, and you have to know and understand what it is, and then at the right moment they will do all of this different maneuvering. Yeah, so they're not always in people either. Sometimes they influence That's people. That's right. Everyone is not possessed by demons. Yes, but there are people who are influenced by them. Almost anybody can be influenced by a demon, and so once you get that understanding, you won't you won't always be looking for a person to have an obvious thing where they're they're um, growling and doing all this right. unnecessary stuff, right? But uh, the point of the matter is this. One thing I wanted to say is that when you are trying to examine your life to see why certain things are not happening, mm -hmm. leave no stone unturned. You hear that? That's wow. the problem. I hate to say it, but a lot of times people are um, omitting their own um, faults. They're... they're yeah just overlooking them and they, they say well that was a long time ago or uh, but if it's unrepented it doesn't mm -hmm. matter how long ago it was that's right. if you didn't repent from it right that's right and uh, then you have people who um, have aughts against their brother some of the biggest things that that you are going through is because you haven't fixed something with another person we don't think Yah holds those things against us but the scripture tells you it says before you come to the altar with your gift if you have an order against your brother, you need to go mm -hmm. fix that with them first. See, the yep. thing is we're trying to circumvent Yah's word. Yep. We're trying to get around fixing problems and issues mm -hmm. so you're leaving stones unturned. You might think it's a small stone. Well, I don't really have to deal with this person. I don't have to, you, you think that you can do people wrong and you don't have to fix those things? Well, Yah... Yah is different than that. He thinks differently than we do. We have to fix things. You know what it's like? It's like a weed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a weed growing in your garden. You sit there and you say, oh, I don't have to fill with that little weed. He's just a, such a little bitty weed. Hmm. Okay, keep thinking that. As you go away, come back two, three weeks later, let it rain a few it's times. To that even thing, pull it out that of That thing there. can get so big, you'll sit there and be scratching your head like, oh my goodness. And the sad thing about weeds, sometimes when you try to pull them out, they'll yes. pull out the good stuff too. That's right. Yeah, they'll uproot. They'll uproot the good plant. That's right. They'll choke them out even. Mm -hmm. And so you got to keep in mind, you can't leave stones unturned, right? You got to, you got to go. You got to look at everything. Mm -hmm. One thing that I like about this story, it reminds me of the prayer of Jabez. Jabez was literally saying, 
He literally said that if you do this for me and you be for me and take care of me and keep me from harm and evil, here go to it. This is in First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10 reads as follows. And Yebetz called on the Elohim of Yashrael saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from evil, mm -hmm. that it may not grieve me. And Elohim granted him that which he requested. Wow. The thing that gets me about it is the way he said it was almost like, if you would just do this, I would be so grateful. I would praise you. It, it, you could hear that tone in the way he said it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, understand this, right? That's how Yah is. Yah is looking for someone that's going to be serious. See, the problem with the, this, here's the problem that Yah has with us. I'm going to show you with, with most people. Now, you watch this, right? Um, let me type this up. I want to read this story to you. It's a small story. This, let me type up this one word here, and this should bring it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is why most people are like this. And this is what the problem is. This is Luke chapter 17. Okay. And we're going to start at verse 12. Luke chapter 17. We're going to start at verse 12. We're going to read that down to 17. Okay. Luke chapter 17 verses 12 through 17. And as he entered into a certain village, Talking about Yahushua. there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Yahushua, Rabbi, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified Yah and fell down on his face at his feet mm -hmm. giving him thanks and he was a Shamaranai and Yahushua, and Yahushua answering said mm -hmm. were not there ten cleansed but where are the nine where are the other nine where are the nine See, that's the problem is most of us are like the nine mm -hmm. we, we, want the, we want to say the prayer of Jabez right we say, oh, Yah, if we, you would just bless me. Yah say, okay, I bless you. And then they bless you, and then you gone. I got mine. Mm -hmm. You better get yours. I got mine. It's like a street mentality we have. Yeah. He said, where the other nine? Y'all uh, all got blessed like this, and you couldn't come and give Yah the glory? Mm -hmm. You went on with your blessing and ain't even look back. That's what your problem is. That's what most people's problem is. Okay. Yah's looking to get some glory. You know, do you mean to tell me most of us is like that? Most people, a lot of people are just religious. Yeah. But not even religious enough to give y'all the praise. Yeah. When was the last time you opened up your mouth and praised y'all? Yeah. Do you think you too good to praise him? Do you, you think you too good to sing the <laughs> song of praise unto y'all? Mm -hmm. It amazes me that there's this attitude of pride and joy of knowing yeah. who we are. Yeah. But some of these people who are so grateful to know who they are of the flesh, they dressed apart, the looked apart, and got their fringes on and all of this kind of stuff. But you don't even praise Yah. You don't even see the, the usefulness of yeah. it. Yeah. Scripture said, let everything that have breath praise Yah, right? Why is it that you can't find it within yourself to praise Yah because you're just like the nine in the scripture. The, ten of them yeah. came and got cleansed. He blessed ten of them, but only one of them came back to praise him and thank him and worship him. But the other nine yeah. went on about their business. That's why I like the song by Fred Hammond. We love you like that. He said, we'll praise you at the drop of a hat yeah. because we love you like that. We yeah. love you like that. Mm -hmm. Man, we'll just praise him at the drop of a hat. Ain't nothing for us to praise him. You should. It should be easy for you to just say hallelujah, hallelujah, and just praise. It should be easy. When was the why last time it, you said hallelujah? You, you get around people, you can't open your mouth. 
You could be in a in even in a uh, uh, assembly setting, and you you hold back on your throat, won't praise him for nothing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But let somebody come and drop drop a thousand dollars in your hand or or, or or half million dollars in your hand, then all of a sudden you up shout. Let your team, your basketball team, your football team or something win win the win the Super Bowl or something, right? Then you up jumping and shouting, right, out in the streets, right? That's just how we are as a people. But as a release, say, yeah, no, I ain't got no praise for you. Mm-mm. It's hard for me to get it out. I, I just can't get it out. Well, I guarantee you. Let me say something to you, mm-hmm. right? And this is to all of you out there, Gentiles and non-Gentiles, Gentiles and, and Yah's people and Israelites. Let me say this to you, right? Pay attention. It's going to be some shouting, whether you do it now on earth, or if you make it into the kingdom, you're going to be shouting. Or if you go to hell, it's going to be some shouting Shout down there. the way it goes. You're going to be shouting. You might, I like to get mine out now. And when I get to the kingdom, I'm going to shout some more. Right? But I'm going to praise him now. I'm going to. That's why he said the rocks will cry. If these, if these people will hold their peace, the rocks will cry out. It shouldn't be nothing for you to praise him. People mm-hmm. make a big deal out of that. You can sit there and say, praise you A person say, Hallelujah. Or they won't say anything. Won't say anything. You just tell the person, praise him. I'm looking at all of you right now. Praise him. Praise him hallelujah. right now. Just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say, say it with joy. Say it hallelujah. like you mean it. Hallelujah. Don't hallelujah. just say it because I'm telling you to say it. It should be in your heart to praise him. Mm-hmm. The writer hallelujah. said, the one writer of a song said, when I think of the goodness of Yah and all that he's done for me, my soul oh, cries out. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank Yah for saving me. Hallelujah. Your soul should be crying out. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Hasn't he done something? What didn't you wake up this morning? Did he have to do it? Did he have to wake you up? Huh? Did he have to? He could have let you just go and stay asleep and just go on and die in your sleep. Mm-hmm. But instead he woke you up. That should be enough for you to just say hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we some stubborn people. Yeah. Anytime the most high the, the, the most high of all the heavens. The most high Yahuwah of all the heavens almost get like he got to beg people to praise him. That's mm-hmm. why he's like, I'm not going to beg you. You know what? Whew. That's why the word says, mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. said this. He said, you seek me with your with your um, mouth, mm-hmm. but your heart is far from it. Yeah. You serve me with your mouth. Your mouth, that's In right. In other words, you say, oh, I love him. Yeah. I trust him. I believe him. I, I thank him. him. You say it with your mouth. Yep. But your heart is far from it. He's the most I was like, um, I see you. Yeah. You sitting back saying it because people can hear it. So you're mm-hmm. trying to get people to believe that you love the most high, that you seek him and that you serve him, that you trust him and all of this kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. You verbalize it so that those around you can hear. But Yahuwah is telling you your heart is far from it. Mm-hmm. He knows that in your heart you do not seek him you don't trust him you don't love him Mm -hmm. you don't fear him that's the problem the scripture says because of the fear of yah men depart from evil so what is the flip side of that because of the lack of fear of yah men run to evil run to it they don't fear yah they don't fear what Mm -hmm. he's able to do even job a righteous man he says, when I consider what he is able to do to me, yep. I am afraid of him. Afraid. And the problem today is a lot of people just don't fear y'all. They don't fear him. Mm-hmm. You know what? I remember when I, around the time that I first received the Holy Spirit, I would listen to some gospel music and some of that gospel music would be anointed. I'm telling you right now, I know the Christians made some of that, some of those music, those songs, but some of those songs were anointed because some of these people had the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. These were y'all's children singing. Mm-hmm. You know, and they were singing some anointed songs. And he said, let everything that have breath praise me. Praise me, praise that's Yah. right. He didn't say, let everything that called himself a Hebrew Israelite praise Yah. That's right. And we've already proven in the scripture we read today that a person don't even have to know Yah. Yah can be throwing blessings at them. Yeah. Right? He can. They, he, says, he said that he was with them and they were with him. But they had to continue to seek him mm-hmm. because if they continue to seek him, then they'll come away from more stuff. Right. So like the way we were when we were Christians, right? Right. And so at the time... I would listen to some 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 gospel music that would really praise me. I would praise y'all, 
and I would get so excited and just be praising him, you know. But I would always do it in my room with loud music and door closed or whatever, right? And I'll never forget the first time I went to an assembly where people had the Ruach, for real, the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. And these people were praising and praising Yah and shouting. And let me tell you something. You could tell they didn't care who was around. They were in another. They weren't even here. Spiritually minded. They were in They were in heaven. They had the Holy Spirit on them. And they were praising and shouting and praising them. And I was sitting there. And I could tell. I said, none of these people ain't paying attention to each other. They just, they, they're praising them from their experience that they had. It's, you can see the experience they had. Some of them were, were, were sick. Some of them were on drugs at one time. Some of them had been through different things in their lifetime. And y'all had delivered them and they were praising them. And I remember sitting there and I was like, wow. And so I just said, you know, I'm going to praise them too. I said, I'm mm -hmm. going to praise y'all. And I just started praising them. And then I, I just didn't even think about nobody around me. I just praised them. And the most I blessed me because he didn't. He don't want you thinking about the people around you when it's come to praising him. Right? And I want to say this to you Hebrew Israelites. Many of you mock that. Now, we yeah. understand that there are some people who just messing around and fooling we around. That, yeah. It ain't no different than the Hebrew Israelites. Yeah. A lot of foolery in that too. That's right. But when people are praising the, the Most High, the Scripture says, let everything that have breath praise Yah. That's right. It didn't say let those that are righteous praise Yah, those that are black, those that are white, those that are Hebrew Israelite. Right. It didn't say that. It said let everything that have breath praise praise Yah. Yeah. But I see a lot of you mocking that. You mock the um, experiences that many have had in the Christian church where people are praising Yah. Do a, you mock it. I see it all the time on social media. If you don't understand it, it's better to just keep your mouth quiet about yeah, it. Shut up this about is it. why the Most High cannot truly anoint some of you and touch some of you and even fill you with the Ruach because you have allowed your mouth to write a check that you can't cash, can't cash yeah. because you are mocking something that you don't understand. Let, let me say something to you. you. You know what make that's why I always tell people instead of mocking it, you know, because I do agree. Uh, the majority of the stuff we see in the churches there is a bunch of recently. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a bunch of it's a bunch of crazy stuff. People shouting and praising. A lot of them mm. don't even have the Holy Spirit. They just it's a lot of it's a lot of stuff going on. I get that. I, we know that, right? But let me say something to you. That's why I always tell people, read the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Because one experience that I always think about was the man who was at the, t at the temple gate, right? Called Beautiful. And he was sitting there, and Peter and James, I think it was Peter and James that walked over to him. And he was asking for alms, and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as if I have, if I have. He said, in the name of Yahushua, you know, rise up and walk or whatever. This man jumped up, and the scripture says he was running, walking, and leaping and praising Yah. Right? Why was you doing all of that, fella? That's wrong for you to do that. No, it wasn't no, wrong. No, it's he not. was he was he was expressing his joy God, for what Yah has just did for him. Here he was laid at the gate, couldn't move, and now he can, he's able to run and leap and praise Yah. Of course, he's gonna run and leap and praise him. But you think he crazy. But you think he crazy. You think he putting it on. No, that man got an experience, right? And many people have experiences with Yah that bring forth that kind of joy. They, the scripture told you David danced and shouted till he came out of his clothes. So what you think he was just doing a little dance like this here? You think he was doing all these little street <laughs> dances y'all do? <laughs> Is that what you think Dave was doing? They was all over the place shouting and praising Yah to where he came out his clothes. Just Some because you, you don't know nothing yeah. about that don't mean that it's not a real That's experience. Right. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. It's an experience you have when you have get overflowed with joy. Mm -hmm. You understand me? And, and if you can't praise him like that, that's because you haven't experienced nothing. Right. And that's because you might have a yeah. spirit of um, heaviness on you. Yeah. That's right, a spirit of heaviness. A, f a spirit of heaviness that won't even allow you to even thank Yah. That's right. Won't even allow you to say hallelujah. Won't even allow you to lift up your hands. Yeah, won't even lift up your hands. You sit there just looking at everybody. Well, I'm, you know, I, I remember somebody I heard, I remember a Christian said this one time years ago. It was one of them Christians who like to go to them dead churches. You know, dead churches don't praise them or nothing. They just sit up there like, Mm. <laughs> mm. You know. Hey, we ain't at no funeral at no yeah. cemetery. I get a funeral or whatever, right? But I remember when um, I said something to, to this person, um, this was years ago, about that. And I said, um, I said, well I, well, 
I just don't get excited. I just, I, I just don't want I just, you know, all the noise and, and, and it just. I just don't get excited. God is not the author of confusion. I just don't. I just don't get like that. That just don't. Well, then don't go to heaven. You don't want to go to heaven. If you don't. If you don't like shouting and praising, don't go to heaven then, because the scripture told you in Revelations, right at the marriage supper of the Lamb, there's gonna be so many people shouting. Right, the four and twenty elders are going to be shouting, uh, "Hallelujah, Hallelujah!" Multitudes of people going to be shouting so loud it's going to be like like tsunamis of praise going around in heaven. So you don't want to go there then. If you if you just can't praise them and you don't want to, you can't deal with all that loud praising. Then that ain't the place for you. But if you go to hell, it's going to be screaming it's down be there. Too. Screaming down there. But see, you have to understand. Just because you don't feel anything, yeah, that doesn't make you the standard. Don't. That I mean, you, I don't feel it. I don't, okay, you're not the standard though. Well, you need to. See, I can look yeah. in the scripture for the standard. Yeah, it tells us to praise him with a dance. That's right. <laughs> Didn't it say praise him with the yeah, dance, y'all? Sure so yeah. why do so many people go away, get away from the dance? They think there's something wrong with it. Yeah. When the scripture told you the Bible that you claim to know, praise him with a dance, yeah. tambourine on the harp, on the cymbal, the high yeah. sounding cymbal, That's the tam right. all of that. So what's up with you, family? It's too mm -hmm. much for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I tell you. But you know what? But then we wonder why we got all these problems, right? The spirit of heaviness. All these problems in our life. In every area of life, you got problems. You got lack going on. You got problems going on. Problems on your job. Financial problems. Marriage problems. Uh, um, family problems. Um, problems in, your, in, in every area of your life. You wonder why you got all these problems. I'm not saying... That, that that and everybody that, that 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 I am that I don't have anything that I need to seek y'all for. I know that there are some things I still need to seek y'all for. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I'm saying. But you wonder why we all have all these different things in our life? It's because we don't seek Him like we should. That's now look right. at this scripture. This is the last scripture. I'm gonna give you this last one. This is Matthew chapter six, verse thirty-three. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 reads as follows. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahuwah and his righteousness. That's right. And his righteousness. Yep. And all these things shall be added unto you. That means all the blessings that you seek in an area of your life is going to be added unto you if you just seek him and his righteousness. Seek him and, and his, his righteousness. righteousness. If you do that, I guarantee you Yah will pour out blessings on you in every area of life. You won't have to be seeking Yah about, about this problem and that problem, marriage problems and all of these things. Yah will show you. He will turn things around for you. He will make things better for you. I guarantee you he will. I want to just address again um, the marriage series that we've done over the years, right? Because yes. we get a lot of marriage questions, family yes. questions. But I, I would say to a lot of you who email us these questions, please look at the marriage series. The marriage series is going to uh, really enlighten you on some things that happens with husbands and wives and children and um, problems that enter in. And I'm not just talking about just normal things, disagreements and things of that nature. There's always going to be disagreements. I don't agree with everything my husband says. He don't agree with everything that I say, That's right. right? But some of those heavy duty things or emails that we get, I mean, things to where um, y'all y'all on y'all way separate. Y'all going your separate ways and you're just moments away from that or he don't love you anymore or you don't love him anymore. You don't trust, you're afraid. All of these different things or demons have infiltrated your home. Look at the marriage series. Yeah. We don't talk about it enough because we have so many other things to cover. We have did extensive um, videos on the marriage and the subject of marriage and how even demons they're assigned to slip right in there from the yeah. from the moment you say I do yep demons are assigned and so if you understood how deep this battle was you wouldn't be playing around too many people are playing around there's, there's a lot of selfishness in marriages you know mm -hmm. you get the both both spouse are self selfish 
-hmm. you know, and neither one wants to back down for what they want. And this, it ain't a question of scriptures sometimes. It don't be a question of scriptures. Mm -hmm. It can just be certain things that they just don't back down on this, don't back. It's a lot of selfishness. And as long as you got people that are selfish in marriages, marriages ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. You can't be selfish in a marriage. You got that, that man. That the scripture talks about Yahusha, how he is with his bride, right? Mm -hmm. He makes sure she has all her needs. He is the man of the house. He takes care of her. He protects her. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yahusha ain't looking for that woman to protect him. You know, uh, um, you know. Imagine Yahusha says, you know, when you gonna protect me? <laughs> I need you to protect me. You know, I need when you the, the bar. <laughs> protect me when I go out here. No, I need you. I need, you know, I would. I, I I'd be like. If, if Yahushua was like that, I'd be like, I don't know. Well, okay, but I will. Uh, I am gonna say this. <laughs> I've already made this very clear. A person gonna have a hard time getting to you if I'm around. Exactly. I'm gonna look out for my baby. I'm exactly. And, I, and I know she will. <laughs> I already know she will. I already yeah. know she will. But I'm not looking for I know her protection. You, I understand what you right. mean. But, but, I'm just but saying, I, you I got know. It though. I I know that she. If I need her, she gonna come for a flight. Like that's right. <laughs> <laughs> You know That's what I'm right. saying? Exactly. And I and guess what? I expect the woman to because she loved her husband. She can just let nobody just haul him off or whatever. She gonna she gonna be like a wild bull on that man. That's right. Or somebody trying to hurt her husband. She's she gonna, gonna be like, Who who <laughs> in the hell left the gates of hell open? <laughs> like I love that one one video we saw in the college dorm or something where those guys jumped mm -hmm. on that on that one black guy and that young guy's lady. young lady she wasn't even his wife. She was just his girlfriend. She came out she like a locomotive. She came out like a little chased them off. Mm -hmm. She ran off four or five dudes off of him. Now, I want to make this note real quick. <laughs> See, black women do that yeah. because we love our husbands or our men, period, right? But we just saw an incident the other day where um, somebody was doing something they had no business and his brother had to intervene because this other man was messing with his sister, right? But... His wife, she just stayed out of it. <laughs> <laughs> she stayed out of it. Sure but see, black women ain't like that. We don't stay out of it. You try mm -hmm. to hurt my baby, you gonna have to deal with me too. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine when Eric Garner was getting snuffed out if his wife was there? Oh, she wouldn't have stood by she for that. She wouldn't have stood by for that. She'd have, she'd have run in there like a locomotive boy. Mm -hmm. Red, they would have, probably would have killed her too. She would have went in there just like you ain't about to kill my husband. She'd have went in you there have like to get crazy. your hands off of him right now, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And so, I but anyway, you. we weren't trying to get yeah. into marriage. <laughs> I just wanted to encourage you all to watch the marriage series because yes. we t tell you all about our ups and our downs. Yep. You know, from the beginning <laughs> to the end. You know. Yeah. And that. You have to understand that this is the devil. Again, yeah. I'm not talking about little disagreements because you, you're going to have those. Yep. Husbands and wives are not going to agree on everything, right? That's right? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this heavy-duty stuff that's um, there to just uproot your marriage. Okay? Right. Go back and watch the marriage series and understand how demons play a role we in a, all of that. We got another one we want to be doing real soon. We're going to yes. get back into the series because there's some more things that the most I have shown us. That we got to bring forth. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, family, we love you. We love this you all. This is Shabbat. We want you to enjoy your Shabbat. Mm -hmm. We always take get in the Word, get some rest. You know, I know it's hot out there. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy for me to get rest when it's hot. Yeah, when it's hot <laughs> like this, y'all, it's like, okay, yeah. it's time to just relax and rest, get in the Word, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, let Yah guide you on the day, you know. Mm -hmm. But enjoy. Anyways, thank you all for joining us. Yes, absolutely. We love you all dearly. Yes. And as always, keep on seeking Yah like they did with your whole heart. Go a little further. Yes. Don't stop where you are, where you've been. Go a little further. A lot further. You got to go a lot further. Yeah, in this day and yes. age, it's calling for it. That's right. We're up against some, some rough looking days, family, in this nation and in the world. That's right. So go a lot further. Go a lot further. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom, family.
sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.